what up everybody um so after uh after the uh last video which i did on uh wound damage and stuff i thought uh it might be cool if i showed you guys uh how wound damage actually enhances farming um so i decided to put together this little video just showing you uh how much faster the farming can be when you properly utilize uh wound damage so um, since this is not obviously a build test, we won't be going to the highest level of combat. No, we'll actually just be doing, um, the ideal combat pathway and just, uh, proceeding with that to, uh, show you guys how wound damage enhances farming. So we'll, we'll do that right now. Um, I'm also going to be using tonics. Why? Because I am lazy and I really cannot be arse playing properly. Uh, it's a Sunday, it's usually my day off, um, but I wanted to do this demonstration anyway. So, if you want to utilize wound damage in combat and uh, actually, like, you know, enhance how it works, um, you want to probably get into combat first. And when you do, you want to go for a wound ASAP and take advantage of that. Like, in this particular case, I'm using Savagery together with acidic to proc a wound fast and then from there uh dish out extra devastating amounts of damage we've also got reckless leap but you'll see that later okay so first and foremost we gotta enhance ourselves all right like i said once again i'm lazy so as soon as the wounds proc right you gain the buff, so what you want to do is just go extra ham. Utilizing the buff, <clears throat> you basically delete your behemoth real fast like that. And this is how speed farming works with a wounding build. Uh, especially with when you have catalyst and, and tonics to assist you, it can go by really, really quickly. Which is actually how some people reforge at a super high speeds. So, effectively, it's all about proccing that wound really, really fast and then just going ham and proccing more wounds along the way in order to enhance the number of areas where you can double damage, especially with something like savagery going on. You basically do something like this and the behemoth should be dead in mere moments. Um, okay, so like so, and then you move on to the next target and you just keep repeating this process over and over and over again. And uh, if no good targets appear, then you move on to the higher level hunting ground and you just do that repeatedly um, and you'll be able to, you know, get it all done. Oops. How come that did not trigger properly? There we go. Seriously? Like I legit have to fly down? So uncool. One tonic will usually net you about three kills. And then everything after that is just gravy. Like, you will generally want to target the part that you wounded. Um, obvious, for obvious reasons. Uh, with Savagery, you get your buff. And you're dishing out like 200% damage. So, it makes no sense not to be targeting that part, man. You know? The other downside is that if you miss... There we go. So like I said, a potion will last you about three behemoths. As long as there's behemoths like three or four levels above me, I just don't... I don't uh, shift hunting grounds just yet. I'll just uh, get in range of the jump, of the teleport jump, and consume some potions, and then off we go um, to strike it again. So again, this is how 
the speed farm works. It's fairly simple. Dash in. Proc an early wound wherever you can. Proc some more wounds. Now, if you proc a second wound while your Aether Rush buff is active, it doesn't mean that you get double Aether Rush, FYI. You just, uh... It just refreshes the buff, but... Like with the Warp Pike, most people will use something like Executioner's Spearhead to take advantage of additional wounds. Alright, so that's very important as well. So... And if you use Malkyrion's Legendary, you also get to take advantage of the additional, uh... Faster movement speed from Behemoth to Behemoth using the Teleport. So that's what we're doing right now. We have to dish out all these wounds that basically double our damage now. And the double damage will include stagger, so then it becomes really easy to dish to like keep a behemoth staggered while all the wounds are everywhere. And basically this is how, like I said, this is how the speed farm works uh, when you're speed farming with a catalyst style wounding build. Um, it just works effective. It's just very effective and efficient. Oh my god. And sometimes you'll carry over the Aether Rush buff that you had from, like, the previous Behemoth. And this can help you dish out even more. But some Behemoths, like this Forestruck Embermane, they are just a pain in the ass regardless of what you do. With their odd-ass little hitbox. That's okay. Even if they have weird hitboxes, just just go ham on them, and they'll die off quickly enough. Yeah, like so. Okay, and uh, again, because we still have something that's about three three levels above us. All right, we don't shift hunting grounds just yet. We just charge in. Now this is without any tonic buffs. Not that it changes much, like I said, even without any tonic buffs, you'll still be able to do fairly well. Just as long as you know what you're doing. Proc a wound. And then go ham. Now in this case, we also have the discipline buff to assist us. And all these extra little part breaks make this very easy. That was without any tonics. But now that most of the creatures are only about one level higher, we just shift to the next hunting ground. Which would actually be uh, Cape Fury. We can do that. Or if you want to at this point, you can start going into escalations. Assuming you're running an Asian robot build, uh, it's fairly simple to do so. Okay, and this is going to be a bit of a longer video because I'm not here to just show you a small section. We're actually going to uh, show you over about half an hour um, how all of this works. And, uh, you know, I just hope it it uh, helps to enhance your gameplay and, you know, whatever you're doing. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Not a good morning for my throat, but anyway, that is how it is. Some days it's just like that, you know. Okay, so we got a Shadow Touch Koshai right here. It's about five levels above us. That's a perfect target. So we'll dash in. Now, when doing speed farming, picking and choosing your targets also very, very important. Please remember that. Because as much as you want to proc a wound and proc the shock, all right, it's going to be problematic for you if you proc a wound and then you can't do shit after that. Or if you are... Like, Cape Fury has a lot of lightning-based behemoths and you're using lightning as your main element here. So, not exactly the smartest situation, right? But that's okay. That's fine. Now, this thing is going to do its silly Koshai thing. So, just knock it down. And just keep going. If you're not seeing a behemoth part bleeding that blue, then you'll probably want to try and bleed bleed one of the areas so that you get the damage buff you need. Now in this particular situation, we're going up against Thunderdeep Drask because it is extra annoying. Just kidding. 
we're not going to do that. We're actually going to go after the Stormclaw. Why? Because the Stormclaw, when it's alone, is very easy to deal with. It really doesn't do much. So. Ooh. Patrol chest. And you do have uh, discipline as well. So that's what you're going to do. Where the heck is this guy? Can I reach him from here? Yes, I can. Benefit of Malkyrion. Saves you the travel distance. Rock your wound and go as ham as possible. Try to go more ham if necessary. That'll happen. That's also why I prefer a particular style with these guys. Only because their electric balls, like, do weird shit. And, well, as you can see, they'll it'll randomly get hit later on. It's fucking wild, but that's how it works. Alright, we got a nice little Boreas over there. So, we're gonna enhance ourselves right before then. And, you know, just hit it. Um, like I said, it's fairly easy to gain levels doing it like this, and if you want to speed farm, this is generally the way to do it. Of course, it's better in a team of four, you'll just go so fast that, um, all your levels will be done, and, you know, it's just bada bing bada boom. You know, it's that easy. But whether you're alone or in a team, like, all of this will function exactly the same. A lot of people, I think, don't understand that team play is exactly the same as solo play. Just that you have four people doing the type of damage that you need, you know? Which can enhance your overall gameplay. Like, that is basically how, um, you know, we in the Robot Nation do it. Like, when we're out in force, most of us are bored with the game. But when we're out in force, you know, it's just so easy to just, you know, smash things down. And all right, so we got a little 15 storm claw over here. Is there any way that I can teleport to it? Yes, I can apparently. Through the rocks. Oh man, I hate it when it stops me from doing that. Yeah, there we go. Now we're talking. This poor fella got very, very confused. But it's okay. It's okay, little doggy. I got you. Oh, wow, that leap, that leap failed. Didn't you just love the hella defective AI that some we sometimes get? It's beautiful. Wondrous AI. Ah, yes. Wonderful, wonderful, beautiful AI. Oh no, my buffs have run out. How sad. I feel so upset, guys. Can you tell? And for some reason, his attack pattern was to rush me. Okay. Coolio. Now, if you're wondering why the damage looks low, it's because the half the part damage that is actually being dealt is being converted to wound damage, but since we already wounded that part, um, it won't. Gotta love that storm ball just, you know, flying off into the atmosphere. <sighs> Thank you, game, for being oh so wonderful at such key moments. So once you wound a part, you can't wound it again, right? So what you got here is a situation where, okay, you wound it, but this thing didn't stay still, you know, long enough for you to take advantage of it. But that does happen, and again, it's just part and parcel of the whole gig, so... Ignore it. Don't let it bother you. You move on to the next kill. That's his little Boreas here. So you're gonna sup your potions. Give it a nice little charge in. Bada bing, bada boom. And you've got your early wound. It's 
and all that's left for you is to dish out that extreme damage using your ridiculously powerful strikes. Time it well to stop yourself from taking any extra damage and then bada bing bada boom. Mr. Horius the Boreas is dead. And you, my lucky friend, get to do it all again. This time on the Horn Claw. Let's go over there. And there we go. The dorm claw is dead. And now, like I said, you get to do it all over again on the Savate. favorite little savage grasshopper. Come on. Come on, you mantis boy. Yeah. Beaten with your own UE. Okay, since there isn't anything much left, right? Once again, we go straight to the escalations and it doesn't matter what escalation it is, assuming that all your escalation levels are up there, you can just rush in and uh, get done. So that is exactly what we'll do, and we'll go smash down some of the Excalations. There we are. So again, doesn't matter what escalation you do, uh, the same principle, the same general principle applies, and you get to go in and just smash faces. So that is exactly what I'll be doing here. Okay, one second. Okay. Now, when it comes to escalations, uh, you've got escalation buffs, but the same principles still apply. Like, you don't have to take potions on round one. I'm just doing it to show you, to show you like how it works. Alright, as long as you know the behemoth pattern, it's not difficult. You still want it once you proc the wound, you just want to go ham. Proc the wound and start going crazy. With all your escalation buffs, even at like as early as level 12, okay, you'll be able to smoke these escalations. Assuming, of course, you've got your Slayer's Path escalation buffs and, of course, the Asian robot build um, to be doing this kind of stuff. Um. You can just move on after that. Now here, pop quiz, who do you kill first? Thunder Deep Drask or Nasher? Okay. The answer is actually you should kill a Thunder Deep Drask first, but I like making myself miserable, so I'm gonna uh, fight the Nasher first. Also just because I think it'll be funny. Anyway, it's gonna die in seconds, so. As you can see, this fight is over. as always are more than a little annoying but if you can deal with it you'll be all right 
key thing is just survive and whack it down so technically speaking we would normally deal with the thunder deep first but this wouldn't be very fun if it wasn't humorous right okay now while we wait for the aether vent to charge up because i've got no extra revives here i'm just gonna suck on this aether vent you know suck on that sweet aether vent honey all right and go Doot. Um, let's go with Lady Lux Barrage. Okay, we got ourselves a Pangar. A super easy creature. Refreshed out potions. Keep in mind that you do want to, as much as you possibly can, focus on the wounded part just so that you can dish out extra damage, alright? Still got over half your tonic buff left. Okay. Paragon's Blessing will do. Okay, Surveyed and Embermane, who do you kill first? I'm actually gonna, like, normally I would open up with my, as you know, my, uh, my lightning dash, but I didn't do that here because if there's one thing that's gonna be problematic, it's Savate. So I wanted to proc that early wound on him just so I could spam this and try and get a stagger on him early. Yep, there we go. Those early wounds, very important. Why? Because Servate is an asshole. I mean, so is Embermain, but if you don't want to die early, then this is how to do it. Okay. Oh, shit! That was a miscalculation. Ah, well. I guess I'm dead here. Maybe I really should have just dealt with the Ember Main first. Oh well. C'est la vie. That can happen sometimes. Do 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 do. But either way, even if you die, the XP is pretty good. So, here we go again. You already got another level tucked under your belt. And how many levels did he go up? Uh, it's been about 23 minutes. I think we got about three levels. Three nice levels tucked under our belt. Um, of course, the leveling due to the amount of XP you need is going to increase overall, right? So if you, like, you obviously won't be gaining levels at the same speed. But if you follow this general principle, um, as your level goes up, the escalations get easier and easier. And of course, at the very end, you just go to Blazeworks around level 19, guzzle your potions and just smash the behemoths there. Yeah. Don't fear dying. If you're if you're just looking at leveling speed, don't even worry about dying. Death, death is relevant. Um, die, return, come back. Either way, you still got most of the XP tucked in. So here we are. And now that we're level 14, we obviously have even more power tucked under our belt. So. Take that. And thanks to Savagery, I wish you a goodbye. Okay. If 
only this Aetherverse thing was faster. Like, legitimately, there's no point in it being this slow. Because then you could just keep your potion, you could just grab it, go, move on to the next, you know? For a second, I thought it was a Civate and Ember main combo again, and I was like, hmm. Is this game hell bent on sending me to Ember Hell? This is pod racing. Whoa. That was quite the sound in my house. Skarn, could you please cooperate? Seriously? There we go. And he's dead. Okay. Now we move on. Do 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 do. The Lux Barrage is always nice. Shadow Touch Nezaka. my buff from the previous round and the fact that we got our wound really fast. can potion up on the next run like right before we fight so that's really good um okay oh expose weakness if you're running wounding this is the way to do it now between shrek and boreas who do we kill first my money is always on the boreas because he's annoying Like the game decides, strike first. you're going to get away from me, Boreas boy. Not even a deep frost version. So do you really think you stand a chance, hmm? Boreas. There we go. Like so. 
That guy got bombarded into oblivion like holy shit. Okay, cool. Okay. Torx Fury. That'll do. I'll have to buff during this fight because of the way the potions are structured, but I can mitigate that with an instant wound. Taking advantage of the lovely discipline buff to show some serious pain. And Fax is dead. So, there you go. That's basically how you do it, right? So, in about half an hour, we've gotten a couple levels. If you add, you throw in bounties and whatnot, you also do it like even faster than that. Um, genuinely speaking, leveling is not a difficult thing. You can do it really fast. <laughs> it's just up to you, like, do you want to do it at that speed or not? Some people do, some people don't. Uh, me personally, if I really want a speed level, then wounding is one of the best ways to do it. Um, just because of how fast it'll go. And like that, with just another two bounties, you've already hit 15, which means that your next, your next, uh, slay is gonna be even faster, right? So you can just keep going like that with these kinds of principles and uh, basically succeed. Um, so this is how people reforge really fast. They use a lot like wounding builds, stuff like that. Whatever gets them through fights ASAP and of course tonics. If you if you really want to use tonics, you can. I mean, they're not that difficult to purchase. All right. Okay. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed my content, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You know, I was very happy to share this with you guys. Um, if you'd like, you can also drop a tip by the link in the description of the video. If you want to support the channel further, you can send super thanks on YouTube. You can join as a channel member, uh, gaining access to various perks, or you can uh, just uh, you know come by the stream and send super chats. Here's a thank you scene. Thank you to the Throne of Honor, uh, Miss Eve, MJ Riffle. They're currently at the only fan level, Death Dawning 982 at Plus Ultra. Uh, Joshua Moritz, Matt Perdillo, Stephen Martin, Jerry Fast, The Forgotten Nate, The Great Rogue Assassin, Oh, Mr. Cream Puff, and Zach MG, all prestige members, very wonderful people. We have July's top supporters, Bravo7910, Kazman to my lovely girl, Zavi Uzumaki, The Mighty Zeno, Death Dawning 982, Miss Eve, Oh, Mr. Cream Puff, Daniel Titty, Noisy, Matt Perdillo, Rogue Assassin, Anarchy Inc., Nate the Great, River Archer 124, CJ on Pluto, Wolfstar Hard, Jordan Shelton, Alfonsi Minerni, Jake Unra, Horitoshi, and Luminous Hill. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you all on the next one. Y'all have a good time now. <laughs>